It's really good to see that there's still people in the audience. Give it a second. Give it a second. Yes. Yes. Cool. Um, okay, so I know that it is late, so I'm going to kick everything off by saying the word fuck. So that everybody wakes up and see, everybody looked up, wonderful. Um, cool, now you're all awake and uh, 30 minutes to do a bunch of slides. Um, I get the, the last slides of lights, that's how I know that that trick works. Um, okay, so I'm not really here to talk about WordPress. Uh, it will come up, but it's not what I'm here to talk about. Um, I'm here to talk about selling online in South Africa and how difficult that is and that it isn't really about selling online in South Africa. Um, so I have some experience in WordPress. I built my first WordPress site in 2004. I actually had to Google if that was right because WordPress was founded in 2003. So I was like, no, it can't be that long ago. It makes me feel so old. Um, but yeah, that's, that's actually true. Uh, I studied journalism and that's probably why I'm known as a media maniac because I studied journalism and I'm a writer by trade, um, which helps with the content. But yeah, I've been building websites for a while. The very first one that went sort of okay and big was SARocks.co.za a while ago. Um, ran that for a while and it disappeared into the ether as many things do. So what I do now is I sell socks. Uh, I have a technology background. I built my first website when I was 12. Uh, then got to high school, started playing rugby, found out about girls and a lot about coding. Um, and my last company was a technology business. We sold technology. We believed we were at the forefront of technology. Um, so I decided when I sold that company to Mixit to move into something more tangible and to make something um, because I was tired of shoveling shit. And I often believe that selling technology is a lot of shoveling shit. You make people believe that what you have is good and you can do design like no one else can do design and you can launch WordPress like no one else can launch WordPress. Meanwhile, it's point and click and the WordPress site is live. You shovel shit. I've done it. I know what it's like. So socks for me was a tangible thing. Um, so selling for me is not just about the websites. That is the sock factory, or at least a part of the sock factory. So not only do I sell socks, I actually help in the manufacturing process. I design them myself um, on that. That is my design process, a square in the middle and the sock overlaid. Um, I studied uh, Photoshop back in the day uh, at journalism when I was doing photography. So that's how I learned Photoshop. Who knew it was actually for design? Crazy. Um, so the process goes as follows. And then these are my socks. So this was the first bunch of socks that we made. And um, because it's not just about the website, the website is the first part of the experience. Um, to try and explain to people who sell technology and design the rest of the world that exists out of that is kind of tricky, so I thought I'd show you. This is what our first package looks like. We decided to sell socks individually because we have no research, obviously. So in the first while, we packaged every single pair of socks by hand, folded by myself, in tissue paper with a sticker on the top. In our first month, we sold 800 pairs of socks. I spent about seven days, back to back, day in and day out, packaging socks. Um, that's got absolutely stuff all to do with the website, right? That is me in an e-commerce website, not looking at the website converting sales. That's me considering what my consumer is going to do when they open the package and what's going to happen once I've shipped something. Because I use the website as the, my store and the back end stuff happens, real stuff happens. Um, so then we decided that we should do some research. And after 12 months, we gathered up all the data that we had on sales and realized that the average number of pairs of socks that someone buys is three. So why on earth am I packaging them one by one? So then we made a box that you can fit three socks in. Um, so now our packaging time is cut in half. Our costs are cut in two thirds because three socks go in one instead of the cost of one sock being covered. Um, and so what this all is, Dave spoke about it earlier, but what I'm actually doing is the, the true and original use of the word, user experience. Now, this slide I inserted when I was listening to Dave talk because he was talking very much about design user experience. The thing that we forget is that user experience is about a user experiencing something. It's not a word that is used together. It's actually something that is targeted at a user experiencing your product. So for me, that is about, yeah, the user needs to understand my logo. They need to understand where to click. Once they've bought something, they also need to experience my product physically. So for me, selling online had very little to do with online in the product of the product. It was about the actual pair of socks. So user experience for me involved this whole process of things. 
And let me tell you, you guys think you've got tough uh, design iterations. Try putting a sock on 50,000 people's feet. Everyone has got a preference. Every user has got a different experience. Everyone's, this is so gross, everyone's toenails are a different length. Everyone's feet are a different size. I've had so many people phone me and go, dude, my, your sock's ripped. My number one thought in my head is cut your toenails. <laughs> Because everyone pulls their socks on really quickly. Now, think about the user experience testing I have to go through and think about when I'm launching a sock that I'm going to design. Where does it, where does, and literally, this is how I have to think. Where does it fit? Where does the design go? What parts do you see when you put the socks on? So user experience for me involves this whole dimension of stuff that isn't about pixel design. It's about product design. And potentially, we all should start looking at pixel design like product design, not necessarily in how it looks. So, because this is a WordPress uh, event, I thought I'd talk about technology. Um, when I started Nexox, we had no money to start the site. Uh, like, I didn't raise capital. When I sold Motribe, a criticism that I got a lot was, oh, it was easy for you guys, you raised venture capital. But we raised two and a half million rand at the back of a business plan in 2010, and that was when it was easy to raise money. So, this time around, I wanted to prove that it's not that hard to start a business with a very small budget with technology that is free. So what I did was I set myself the targets of spending 5,000 Rand to start a business, to do it in six weeks or less, and to get reasonable revenue in 30 days or less. And if I couldn't do any of that, I'd shut the business down and try something else. And it worked. And the reason it worked is because technology has become commoditized. WordPress is something that proves this. Nick Sox is something that proves this. I launched my site in exactly three days uh, using Bluehost.com, sorry, RSA Web, um, $4.99 a month with a one-click WordPress installation. WooCommerce is free, PayFast is free, um, and the Obox site that I bought cost me money. That was it. I launched my site in three days. I went to the manufacturer. The amazing part about manufacturers in South Africa is, and I'm sure around the world, they will give you a sample for free. I could not believe this because it's like it was, it was heaven. I, I got four designs made. I got my iPhone out at the time, took four photos of them, listed them on the websites, did a partnership with CityMob, and within a month I'd sold 800 pairs. I'd still spent only the money on the Obox site. Now, obviously, selling 800 pairs, I had to go to the factory and order the socks, and then I had to pay them, and then I had to ship them, which cost me money too, and packaging, and then the business unpacked itself. But starting the business did not involve a lot of money, and it's something that it really it hurts me when I see agencies charging hundreds of thousands of rands to deploy a WordPress site. It's ridiculous. So for me, I wanted to prove that this stuff is commoditized. And, you know, I think it is. So with that in mind, if you aren't at the front of the technology, if you aren't at the cutting edge of the technology, if you're not developing something that is going to change the game, there is something out there to just deploy quickly and easily. You do not need to build from scratch anymore, and you all know that because you use WordPress. So my thinking when I launched Nexox was, what else am I going to build? How else am I going to engage with people? Because I'd spent a lot of time shoveling shit. And I was tired of getting people to be convinced that my technology was better than technology Y, that had more money, more people, and more experience. So speaking of people, for me, selling online is not about selling something. It's about selling to someone. I'm building a brand that is personable. And something that I'm realizing more and more is people are not clicks. And in our world, they are. They really are. And it's ridiculously sad to look at people that way because people buy stuff. People experience things. People believe ideas. People don't just click your ads. And they aren't to click-through rates. And they aren't to conversion rates. Yes, that's how you make your money, but that's not what they are. And that's not what online sales should be about, especially if you don't have the budgets. People shake hands with people, websites don't. And the very specific reason that I say that is that handshakes close deals. Websites do not close deals. Websites open deals. Um, and what I do is I try and create a brand that enables people to come and find me, discover what I do, contact me, and then I communicate with them. Now, whether that handshake is in person or over the phone or in a meeting or whatever, even an email sometimes, but not really ever, honestly. Um, you need to have a personal touch. It isn't about just pumping out numbers, getting the conversions, getting the clicks, and converting the users. <coughs> because if that is the way you're going to do your business, at some point someone's going to return something, and then your customer service is going to be crap. 
And then what do you do? So I focused on building a brand. And let me tell you, publishing a website is not about brand building at all. Anyone can publish a website, as I proved. In three days, I published the website. Building a brand is about experiencing stuff. Buying targeted keywords is not building a brand. Anyone can do that. Anyone with a budget can do that. But me buying the keyword socks does not make me a premium sock brand. Not even in the slightest. Firstly, I can't afford the term socks. But secondly, anyone can buy the term socks. Yeah, believe it or not, the term socks is actually highly bid for. It's ridiculous. Um, having a Twitter account also does not make a brand. I, you can't say to someone, yeah, I've got a business. I've got an Instagram account, I've got a Twitter account, I've got a Facebook page you can like. Stuff that. And we all know Facebook likes are crap, followers are crap. How do you communicate with your customers? What do they think of your brand? What are they doing when they aren't engaging with your Twitter? Are they thinking about your brand? And for me, let's be honest, when you put my socks on every morning, you guys will joke, but you think about my brand every morning. The most exciting thing that I've learned about my brand and my socks is that three or four months after someone's worn them, lots of people bump into me and go, dude, you know, every morning I smile when I put on the socks. I've built a brand. The brand is something that makes you remember me all the time. No one remembers my website. People will find my website. Number one search term for my website is nextsocks.com. People, seriously, people Google nextsocks.com. Um, <laughs> so the one thing that, for me, um, obviously because I chose to put my name in the brand, is for me it's always on. It's why I don't look scummy anymore. Uh, it's why I, I kind of groom myself, because I am my brand. Um, it's always on. I'm always selling. I'm always telling people about what I do and why I do it and how I do it and how it's different and how it excites me. And, you know, it's always on. I'm always selling. I'm always talking about it. I live my brand immensely. I also tell people about my brand all the time because there's always connections in the real world. Those real world interactions, the selling that happens offline, is often more important than anything I do online. And without being funny, it's part of the reason I do things like this. Because how else do I directly engage with what looks like now to be less than 300 people um, in one place at one time who can get an understanding for my passion? And I read a tweet today that the direct translation ages ago for the word passion is actually suffering. And that could not be more appropriate for any entrepreneur who's doing anything they're passionate about. I suffer through this stuff, and I'm sure all of you suffer through yours too. So not only do I tell people about what I do, I talk to them about it all the time. I ask them what they think of my socks. You know how many people, and the number one request for me was socks? Seamless socks. Without a doubt, the number one request, every time. So now I'm launching seamless socks. That's that simple. And the only way I got that was not from my website or from an online poll on my Facebook page. It's from actually talking to the real human beings who wear my product. Like Dave was saying about your design and testing your websites. It's a real person on the mouse clicking your website. So no matter what you think is good for them, if you don't ask, you're never going to know. So the thing about, um, about people is it's not easy to sell to them unless you understand what a sales cycle is. And myself and Mark were talking about that earlier today, that the biggest problem I see and I've seen in the past um, with technology startups and that is across the board is we all think that launching a new product or a new feature will get more sales. It absolutely won't. Selling gets you more sales. Building and tweaking your product and launching another iteration of that product is not going to get you more sales. You need to talk about it. Um, and something that I've done that helped me immensely with sales is real world PR. I've, in my in total two years with Nick Sox, probably spent a thousand rand on marketing, and that's Facebook dark posts and Twitter and all sorts of crap like that. But the rest of the things that I've done are pitch up to places and talk and market and get into journalists' books and get them talking about me and the person and the story and the brand. Google ads will not ever do that. Once the Google ad budget goes away, I still need people to talk about my brand and engage with me offline as well as online. My idea when I started this is when people were at the water cooler in their accounting firms and law firms and their offices, uh, I know lots of people still work in offices, I wanted them to discuss what socks they were wearing and when they did, they wanted them to think that they were my socks. So the target for me isn't an online thing, it's an offline thing. The same way that people still talk about Facebook. They actually do talk about Facebook face to face. It's really odd if we think about it. So over the past, I've learned immensely about sales and sales cycles. And at Motrive, we couldn't understand why we weren't making money fast enough. And someone educated me about the term sales cycle. And I've learned in my experience, socks, software, skills, SEO, whatever the hell it is, 12 months minimum. Everything I do takes 12 months minimum. 
We all think that startups happen quickly. It feels like WordPress has been around for a fraction of a second. Facebook is almost a decade old. That shit takes time. Everything takes time. 12 months minimum to build anything. If it's quick, it's probably not worth building. It's just, it really is that simple. So everything I do, and even to this day, my sales cycle for corporates is roughly 12 months for a pair of socks, to make them a custom pair of socks, 12 months. And you know what you do in 12 months? You build relationships, and you make sales based on relationships. And whether you know it or not, your website is building a relationship with the person. And there's a person on the other end of that mouse and on the other end of that screen. And if your website is crappy and it's not emotive and it isn't telling people what you do and why you help them, you're not building a relationship. And relationships make sales. Relationships build fan bases. And when you have a fan base, you can sell anything and they'll buy it. Apple is proof of that. Fans will buy anything. Fanboys will buy anything. It doesn't matter what you're selling. It doesn't matter what quality it is. It doesn't matter what price it is. If you've built up a relationship over 12 months with someone, they will buy from you even if you have a crappy website. The other things I've learned about sales cycles, email is not personal. Emails are easy to ignore. Emails are easy to forget, easy to favorite, easy to excuse your way out of. Phone calls, however, are not. If you phone someone, chances are they're gonna answer. If you phone someone and meet them for coffee, chances are you'll sell them. If you phone someone and keep a relationship with them over 12 months, chances are the deal will be, will be bigger. Email does not close. You might think it does, and it might be the email that sends the contract, but email is not a closing tactic at all. And I've learned that time and time again, and the most recent place that I've learned that is Southern Comfort. Um, in a few weeks, Southern Comfort will launch a campaign with a pair of socks, my socks, on every bottle that they distribute around the country. That deal took me 12 months to do. It started as a cold call from them to me through my website, the very next day, I phoned them, met them for coffee, went to their offices, schmoozed them, did everything I could, got the price down, and closed the deal in person, not over email. It's a generational thing. I have overwhelming fear to do cold calls. I can't do it. I, I actually get anxious about it. It's always at the top of my to-do list, is call that one guy that I need to call. Never do it. Just keep pushing it down. I hate phoning people. But every time I do, I close the deal. Phone people, meet them, and get in touch with the human being behind the thing you're trying to sell. Even if it's a website, I hate to say it, but seriously, technology is sold to people. People like to meet people. It's really simple, and I've said that enough. Glocal, um, this is a tricky one. So Nexox ships to 20 countries around the world. Um, we have actually from almost day one. It's an exceptionally difficult thing for us to do because we're in a conundrum. South Africans are very e-commerce shy. Uh, Kalahari take a lot, we all now know that it's real. There is a problem in this country with e-commerce. And the internet is global. Duh. Obviously. I launched a .com with the intention of selling overseas, but that shit is complicated and I'll tell you why. Shipping internationally is tough. Selling internationally is tough. Because of shipping. Um, we ship through the post office. If any of you use the post office, they've been on strike for 10 weeks. <laughs> I've literally not sent 50,000 rands worth of orders for 10 weeks? What am I supposed to do? Couriers are too expensive. You can't, sh and let me tell you, you can't ship to the Ukraine is my most arbitrary shipping right now. Poland, you can't ship there for under $50. Does not work, does not exist. With that said, I've never lost a parcel with the post office. So if you have to do it, it's not a bad place to go if they're actually at work. Um, the other issues that we have involve uh, recurring billing, which has been sold by a company called Peach Payments. If you have WooCommerce subscription plugin and you are looking for recurring billing, in South Africa, Peach Payments, without a doubt, is the best solution. PayPal is a good solution if you're not doing it locally because PayPal doesn't support RANDs because the South African Reserve Bank won't let them. Um, I've discussed this with PayPal at length and it's not their fault. Um, so shipping, payments, uh, language, all of those issues exist. Selling locally is tough too. Um, and there's one very simple reason for it. E-commerce is ridiculously hard to do here because the consumers don't trust you. It's really that simple. I will talk about that a little bit further on, but consumers have absolutely no trust to give you their credit card details and let you build, build them over and over and over. And I spoke at uh, the e-commerce conference a couple of months ago, and the buzzword was omnichannel. Everyone and their frickin' aunt wants to do omnichannel. Take, I'll, I'll be stunned if Takealot doesn't open an actual store in the next two years. Um, the reason is Amazon is opening a store in the UK or the US somewhere. They're actually opening a store while Walmart is trying to go online. The world is batshit crazy. Everyone is trying to do what they think the other one is doing right. 
So omnichannel might be buzz, but in South Africa, it's a real freaking thing, and I'll tell you why. <coughs> it's about survival. For me, I'm not trying to be clever. I'm not trying to use a buzzword. I'm trying to get my product out there as best as I know how, and the way to do that is to have as many people buy it, see it, use it, talk about it as possible. So that means, number one, I'm a PR whore. I've been on every single magazine, newspaper, TV station you can imagine talking about my socks, and I will continue to do that. Number two, my product is everywhere. I sponsor, sorry, we conference, I couldn't afford it. Um, I sponsor conferences, I give socks away to celebrities, I do everything I can to get my products in front of people who will talk about them. And the other thing is, as an e-commerce uh, business, the, the, the genesis of this idea for the talk was, I sell in retail. I'm pushing my product in the real world because I can tell you right now, hands down, without a doubt, socks is not enough online to make me a billionaire in South Africa. Globally, different story. In South Africa, verifiably, there are not enough people searching for the term socks for me to be an e-commerce business using SEO to justify the sales. It's just not there. But there are 35,000 people a day going through the waterfront. So why would I not do omnichannel? Why would I not, and the word is there for a reason, why would I not? Because I have to survive. The one major thing that I've used um, to my advantage, which involves real people and real manpower and time, is customer service. It's the one thing the little guys can do better than the big guys. It's the one thing that I can do that a woman selling socks probably can't. I understand men and I understand men's socks, so I do customer service and I get in my car. And the reason I'd say that is in one of our very, very first sales, some guy must have put his socks on wrong or badly or whatever, and he pulled them up and they ripped. And he phoned us, and I'd just been on 702 that night, the night before, so I can only imagine he was a 702 listener and they love to complain about stuff. And um, he obviously lived in Constantia, so he phoned our work number and he complained about his socks. I got three pairs, packaged them, got in my car, that very second, while I was on the phone with him, drove to his house, rang his bell, and said, hi, please give me the sock, here's three more, here's your money back, really sorry about the mistake, thank you very much. He has continued to buy from me for the last two years. Because I got personal, I got in my car and I went and visited him. I didn't fire off some pretentious douchey email saying, sorry sir, must have been the way you put on your sock, try again next time, bad luck. Customer service, man, the personal touch. But customer service is also difficult when this is not me, this is Nico Panaggio on top billing and those are my socks. I was on top billing in September and it was amazing and fun and blah, blah, blah. But the major issue here is it showed me how absolutely dire the e-commerce state of the country is. So you probably can't see it very well here, but this is the top bar of my website. And if you use WordPress, WooCommerce or any other site, you have that top bar on your own website, the shopping bag, your cart, your social stuff, your email address and your phone number. That phone number, we all know, statistically increases the trust of consumers and increases your checkouts. Okay, great, wonderful. In South Africa, people fucking phone that number. <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic. Um, so t the thing that Top Billing showed us, uh, in, without a shadow of a doubt, is South Africans need a human touch. So I, <laughs> we, I say me, but actually it was Jen who handles a lot of this stuff in the office. She received 60 phone calls in one day after that top billing interview. 60 in a day. We're a freaking e-commerce site. 60 phone calls is not something we're equipped to take in one day. That was literally her on the phone, hanging up, on the phone, hanging up. I managed, someone managed to find my personal phone number and I was about to board a plane. Fortunately, it was 30 minutes away. And he insisted that for 27 minutes, I walk him through the checkout process. I'm not kidding. He was on my homepage and he said to me, so love the sites, can't you just tell me how to buy something? I was like, dude, click on add to carts, click on check out, and then put your credit card details in. Didn't understand. I literally spent 27 minutes on the phone explaining the entire process to him. And when we got to the credit card point, I said to him, now, sir, you have to put your credit card details in. Oh, oh no, I, this, this doesn't feel safe. Thank you very much. Goodbye. 27 minutes on a phone call with someone who didn't want to put his credit card details in on an online site. This is why we have problems in the country right now. It's going to get better, but top billing showed me what the mass market looks like. What people like us don't really understand is that clicking add to cart is, an, uh, one of the speakers mentioned it, it's a standard practice that we think everyone understands that's built into WooCommerce and WordPress, add to cart. If you've never been on an e-commerce website before, what the hell does add to cart mean? 
We don't even call a shopping bag a cart in South Africa. This is a problem for the mass person who's never checked out on a using a credit card online. These are the things that I'm facing because I'm dealing with a consumer who wants to buy a sock. So these are the things that customer service has to get over and real people in South Africa want real people to help them. Real products, real stores, real sales. This is where the masses are happening. I mean, you can go and see that ShopRite Checkers does 96 billion rand a year in sales. Kalahari hasn't turned a profit in eight years. Come on, like we've got issues. We're saying that online, take a lot's whole thing about online killing, killing uh, real world is just not real yet. So we have to be everywhere. We have to be where our customers are. It's not all about this tech thing that we all think we're at the cutting edge of. We have to be where our customers are. Um, so that was 25 minutes and not too bad. That's the entire talk, but there is a coupon code and it's an exploding code. It ends tomorrow. You can get 15% off my socks if you use it before tomorrow. Yeah, I'll always be selling. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, I know it's uh, late. If there are any questions, please feel free. There are Absolutely. questions. Did one at the front here? Oh, sorry, it seems I've got a bit of a dead leg. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the loose jeans that you've got on. Okay, so originally you set out to prove that you could do this, yeah. okay? Yeah. What's the point now? Why are you doing this? What's in it for you? Great question, and it's something I actually forgot. So I've been trying really hard to be as transparent as possible to show people, firstly, that you can do it, and secondly, that you can build real businesses, but the main reason is how fucking hard this stuff is. So the reason I'm carrying on with this is that it's now a real business. Last month, we did 120,000 Rand in revenue on our SOC website, starting from a 5,000 Rand base. Um, we are seeing 300% year on year growth and the market is opening up and it has very little to do with socks. It has to do with more people coming online. And for me, socks was proving a model. It was proving that people are ready to buy niche products online and you, anyone wants to start a competitor to take a lot, good luck. But if you want to start something niche, you're on it. You've got something. So that's what I'm still here trying to do. I'm trying to prove that that's a thing. And also, I'm, I'm pretty passionate about fashion, believe it or not. Um, yeah, it's not about tech. For me, the tech was an enabler to prove that fashion is a business. Sorry, yeah. uh, would you then actually expand to other areas, or do you want to focus on socks? Um, so the question is, would I expand to other areas? We will be making an announcement on the 1st of November. Um, so yeah, look out for that. Will you think you won't go for that? Probably not. It explodes. <laughs> it explodes. It ends tomorrow. There'll be lo it's Black Friday coming, Christmas coming, lots, lots to plan for. Any more questions? Yes, there? there's a lady at the back as well who had her hand up. Sure, I'll get to you in a moment. Sure. Okay. Uh, one of the things that um, we get often is people who are upset that they can't use PayPal um, or they can't, you know, charge multiple currencies and those things. And I never know what to say to them, you know, because just telling them it's just not available now is just often not good enough. Do you, do you have any kind of technical reason for why it's being blocked by? By the, by, by the Reserve Bank and so that? Thing. No, that would be my technical reason. Okay. So yeah, there is nothing else to say other say. than the South African Reserve Bank has not approved it. Okay, great. Like, uh, but you know, no, you know what, we, I, I battle with this. I flip-flopped a lot. I used PayFast in the beginning, flipped to PayPal because I thought international was such a big deal. The truth is international consumers don't mind what currency they're paying in. I've yet to have an international guy go, oh, I don't understand this conversion thing. I've had a lot of South Africans when I was in RAND say to me, how many rands is it to the dollar? Google. Use, Goog use Google. I also have a converter on the website. People will email me asking me the conversion rates. I've never had an American do that. So I chose to go put rands on the sites and let the international, more savvy consumer do their best. And it's worked so far. Yeah. Great. Thank you. I'm going to go to this lady here. Hi. Hi. Great talk. Thank you so much. It's Pleasure. really useful. Um, you know Seth Rotherham, he wrote like his little book lately and it was like his cane furniture thing yep. and he was just like, buy AdWords and shit. Um, <laughs> yeah, but now you're going... The you summed up his book in a tweet, well done. <laughs> yeah. Buy ads and shit. Yeah. yeah, but now, I mean, so Seth versus you, like who wins? Um, it sounds like he didn't put in as much effort as you, is he getting as much return? Yeah, so I'll, I'll shift your, I'll change, reframe the conversation. Two Oceans vibe versus Nick Sox, same thing. 
Two Oceans Vibe is a brand. No, no, no. I'm talking about his cane uh, I know. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so with Two Oceans Vibe, Seth chose to build a moniker and a brand. He is Seth Rodram of Two Oceans Vibe. With the cane furniture, he wanted no one to know the brand. He didn't give a crap about any of that. He wanted to sell furniture. That was it, really simply. And it's an exclusively online business. So, sure, it's, what is it? I think it's Cape Town Cane Furniture Coza. It's not really a brand, right? No, it's that's not. just a place to I find. Mean, it's, that, that's that's my question. Is he took a complete opposite approach to you? He's and not building a brand. He's not doing PR. He's just doing AdWords and a basic site. Yeah, and that is one answer to a problem. So there are definitely multiple ways to do this. For me, I chose to put my name on the brand and build something for the next ten to twenty years. I'm building something that I want to do for a while that's going to be valuable in a couple of decades. Nothing worth doing is worth doing quickly. And I'm pretty sure Seth would say that about Cape Town Cane Furniture too, because there's value in that brand for him. It's helped him fund all the other fun things he wanted to do. So I think it's just different contexts of the way to build something. I'm not mm -hmm. saying that my way is right or his way is right. They both seem to work. Or his way yeah, or mine so hasn't worked it yet. It sounds like actually your way is the long-term view. And yeah. Seth was just taking a bit of low-hanging fruit there. Yeah, cool. and I mean, hell, if I Thanks. could, I would. I, no, I wouldn't yeah. do it on Nick Socks, but I'd do it with something but I else. Think, I think what we're saying here is you've built a brand, he's built a... A like product income, place, so a place to push products. Oh, yeah, awesome. completely. And there, I mean, he makes money, so that thing kills it. I, I would not criticize that way of doing it at all. Yeah, it's about what you want out of your business, and I wanted a brand. You can't sell socks if you're just selling socks, man. Like, socks is more commoditized than tech, let me tell you. There's one of the, the biggest sock manufacturers in the country, does a million socks a month. Yeah, to give you my numbers, last year we did 6,500 pairs, this year we've done over 65,000. I pale in comparison, they do a million a month. So I can't compete on socks, I compete on brand. That's the way it goes. Awesome, thank you for that question. Uh, I think we've got time for one more question for Nick, if anyone is uh, interested. There's one here in the front? Sure. Oh, two. Oh, there was a guy over there as well. Oh, was it you um, No, fantastic talk. I guess um, I'm more curious about the, the WooCommerce side of things. I worked specifically with WooCommerce for two years, and it's, yep. I think you're like actually the first person I've ever met outside of what I did in support that actually uses it and has a really cool product. And, it, and I like focusing on, on kind of the brand and the, instead of the technology side of part of it, but I'm curious about the technology side of it. How do you find WooCommerce? How, like, um, I guess, yeah, like how do you manage inventory? I'm just curious about it. I think mm. people might be curious about how, how you use that. Are you managing orders and stuff like <laughs> yeah. you or do you have a team of, of people yeah, yeah. managing using Ten, WooCommerce? team or? is me and one other person, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I'm hands on with everything. Cool. Um, yeah, we, WooCommerce, uh, without it I wouldn't have a business. Um, everything I do is probably South African. My socks are made in the country, they're designed in the country, we ship them using the post office and we use WooCommerce. So obviously that's, that's good. Um, no growing technology that grows at the rate that WooCommerce grows has a perfect solution. There are always going to be issues. WooCommerce's support knows me intimately. Um, Mark and I had a conversation about that last night. Every time they get an email from me, they must be like, this fucking guy, every time. Um, but I know what it's like to build technology, so I'm exceptionally blunt about the issues that I face because it's better to know than to guess. Um, yeah, we, for my needs, WooCommerce could not be more perfect. It's small scale, it's manageable, it's free. Um, I understand how to use it. It grows because of the community it's iterated on very often. Sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad. Um, yeah, obviously it has its restrictions. You can't build a product that has a million stores that caters for everyone's needs. You have to go for the middle. And often I find you know, there are issues that I wish I could solve that aren't solved. However, what I need to do is find a plugin developer who will build me plugins and then I'll solve that problem. So there are always ways around. Um, the other really, really smart thing about WooCommerce, and I know Mark and the team exceptionally well, is I'm in. I'm embedded. I'm never leaving it. I can't. My products are there. My data is there. My history is there. Why would I switch to another system? Magento's a dog. Like, it's, it's just it's a mission. So I'm in, and I'm happy with it. Um, but yeah, nothing that grows at that rapid rate is completely perfect. So, yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah, OK. Cool. There was one, one more. If one more. Uh, who? Yes, sir. And then I swear I'll let you guys go drink beer. Um, it looks like um, take a lot in the way they fight in the e-commerce problem is really pushing mobile. Have you seen that sort of trend also going? And maybe do you think that will help South Africa in the long run with people being more comfortable, more access? 
all there? Yeah, I think um, the best thing to happen to the e-commerce space and the digital payment space in South Africa has been take a lot raising $100 million, Uber entering the country, um, and helping them helping our consumers understand your credit cards are safe. Number one thing that is an issue, that's the biggest one. Um, the way that they're going about it is quite aggressive, um, which is great. It's going to drag the country into the future, and for me and niche players, it's going to give us a, a target on their backs, because the more people they educate, the more customers I have. Um, and that's how we should all be looking at it. The truth is mobile um, is not the next big thing. It's the only thing in this country, and it has been for a decade. We are not a desktop-enabled country. We never will be, and we are going to skip and go to mobile first. Apple Pay for the top LSMs is going to change the way that we all buy stuff when it eventually comes to mass retail. When you can walk into ShopRite or Woolworths, scan your thumbprint and you pay with your Apple account, it's going to change the game. That might be six years away, but it's coming. So if you were doing it, if I was doing it right now, mobile's not where my main source of traffic is coming from. It's not even, I don't think I've ever made, I've made one checkout from the Google South Africa head on mobile. Um, but it will be here in the next three to five years, without a doubt. Um, so just make sure you're mobile optimized. Yeah. Cool. Thank you very much for your time.